install iLeap, first we're going to have to install the VS build tools. This isn't necessary if we are going to in just install the executable and then run it directly, but if you want the latest version from the latest commit, this is what we're going to have to do. So in order to get the Visual Studio build tools, you're going to have to navigate to the Visual Studio build tools page. So that is this URL https colon slash slash visualstudio.microsoft.com slash downloads. So in here, you have the option to download the full Visual Studio. I wouldn't recommend this unless you have some other use for it. We can just download the build tools by themselves and it will work for our purposes. So what you want to do is you want to search build tools. And then you'll see Build Tools for Visual Studio 2022. We're just going to download this one. It'll start the download, and then once it's ready, open up the installer. Accept the admin prompt when you get it. And we're just going to have to walk through the installer. Once that screen is finished, you'll get this installer menu. You can choose the different components that you want to install as part of Visual Studio individually. For our purposes, all we need is this desktop development to C++. So have that checked, and it will show you a list of everything that is going to install. For the fastest download, make sure that we have install while downloading selected instead of download all that install, and then just click the install button. This might take a while, so I recommend going get a coffee. Once your install finishes, be sure to restart Windows. Next, we have to fetch the source code for iLeap. So all you need to do is head to the iLeap website on the GitHub. HTTPS colon slash slash github dot com slash abrignoni slash iLeap. And once you get there, you just click on code and hit download zip. All you have to do is go and find your file. Mine is iLeap-main.zip. And you just want to have to extract it. So I would hit 7-zip and extract to iLeap-main. And it's going to give you this folder. Going into this folder, continue until you can find the source code. It'll look just like how it is in GitHub. Now what you're going to want to do is go into this top bar and type in either PowerShell or a CMD. This will open a PowerShell window in the current path. And one thing that we have to make sure of is that we're running the correct Python version. iLeap won't compile unless you're using from 3.10 to 3.12 Python. We can verify this with Python dash dash version. And you can see that I have Python 3.12.8. As of right now, this is the latest version of Python that this will compile with. So then to actually install the dependencies and make sure everything works, we need to do one more command. pip install dash r requirements.txt. Once we run this, it's going to take a little while, but it's going to build everything it needs to actually run it from the Python file. And this will take a while. If it was successful, it should look something like this. Now all you have to do is run Python. Python iLeap gy.py. And after a few seconds, you should see the iLeap GUI show up on your screen. Now let's grab the evidence. You just hit Browse File. So with iLeap, you can actually use the .zip. If you want to go slightly faster, 
you can browse for a folder instead, and you can just select this folder. Now we need to have an output folder for iLeap to dump its report into. So we're going to hit Browse Folder. And just create a folder. I've created an empty folder called iLeap Demo. And then we can choose what modules we want to run. Once you're ready to begin processing, all you have to do is click Process. You'll get this little window. And it will show you everything that's going on. As long as it finishes properly, you will have a button that appears at the bottom when it's done. And it will tell you to close and open the report. Once that finishes and you open up the report, you'll end up on this page. So you'll see some information about the case here, device details, including like iOS version, IMEIs, and even the model. You can go into the other tabs and you can actually browse through the various modules that ran and see the artifacts. Just like that. Now, however, if you spot it here, there is one message here that says, this report contains artifacts that are likely to return too much data when viewed in a web browser. Please review the Lava Only Artifacts tab for a listing of those artifacts and information on how to open it using Lava. You can also just view these in a DB browser. To view these artifacts, all we'll have to do is right-click on the within the iLeap report folder, right-click on the Lava Artifacts.db, and you're going to want to select Open With. And if you don't see the DB browser for SQL Lite here, all you have to do is choose an app on your PC, and it will take you into your program files. Then you're going to navigate to the DB browser for SQL Lite.exe, and then you can open it. And after a few seconds, you'll be greeted with a screen that contains all the artifacts for this case and they will be presented to you in a database format. This at times can be somewhat easier to browse through and you can filter using the execute SQL tab. Another very handy database to check is under this timeline folder is a tl.db for timeline.db. So I would open this with DB browser for SQLite. Inside tl.db, if we go to the data table, we can see that all of the events are correlated together and sorted by their timestamp. This way we can see a chronological view of everything that happened on the phone. If you ever close out of the report and need to open it again, just head back to the iLeap folder and then open the index.html. It'll bring you straight back into the report. 